I think plants are amazing. The leaves don't grow on top of each other, you know, they spread out and so they maximize the amount of sun they can get. Like, oh, you grow this way and you grow that way and collect as much sun as we can and make glucose and grow. I grew up in Trinidad and Tobago. Trinidad is a very laid back place. It's a beautiful island, but it's also quite built up, so it's very industrial in some parts. Its economy is based on natural gas and oil. And there's a large coral reef out there as well. And people go out and see this all the time. Carbon dioxide levels in the atmosphere are rising. A lot of it is going to be absorbed in the oceans. They become acidified. Coral will dissolve. We need to be able to protect those natural resources we have. Before I came to Caltech, I didn't know that it was so small. <laughs> I knew that it was in Pasadena, which meant it'll have nice weather. You are on the doorsteps of brilliant minds. It's inspiring. I'm a Resnick Prize postdoctoral scholar, and I work on the Joint Center for Artificial Photosynthesis. We want to mimic what plants already do, but do it more efficiently to provide a sustainable form of energy. We have this kind of tripod of desire, so we have efficiency, stability, and sustainability. And so my job is to discover this catalyst that will convert carbon dioxide in the air into something useful like methanol or ethanol. These kind of liquids can be put straight into the existing infrastructure that we have for fueling cars, for example. This catalyst is pretty elusive. On a molecular scale, you can imagine the surface of my catalyst and the carbon dioxide absorbing onto it. There will react and then it'll release molecules of, let's say, ethane. Make a number of different catalysts and you just keep testing them until you find your hit. I have over 500 samples that didn't work. The Joint Center for Artificial Photosynthesis and the Resnick Sustainability Institute get everybody in the same place and on the same page and talking with each other constantly, inspiring each other, advising each other. And that really helped me to just keep going, keep failing until you get there. One day, we set up the cell and, you know, we weren't expecting much. We injected into the instrument and we just looked at the computer trace and then we saw this peak and it was like, ah, we just like, <laughs> we just started like jumping around the lab and just high-fived each other because it worked. You could actually see the gas as bubbles releasing into the electrolyte. We saw methane, ethylene, and ethane being formed. This is similar to what plants do, except they make glucose for food. We can, in principle, use our catalyst to make useful fuels. When we had the breakthrough with the catalyst, it really reminded me why I was here and why I was working so hard, and that not everything that's worth it comes easily. I'll be a very happy camper if my project is successful. I think Caltech is the place to get this done. Yeah.